Hi, in this video I'd like to show you how to use timers in visualbasics.net. It's very similar to you doing it in C Sharp or C++.net. So this is really a .net thing. So let's get started. Now the timer has particular properties that we're going to be dealing with. And in particular, enabled and interval. So they're the two main ones that we'll see. So what I'll do is I'll load up the project, an empty project. And as you can see here, I already have an empty project ready. I'll just make sure that that's a startup project. And now we can put the timer in. So the timer is not in code view, it is in the design view. So you wanna, if you don't have any of this, if you don't see anything at all, I'll just close everything down. Just double click here, because you won't get the toolbox until you open up the designer view. Then you get your toolbox. If you don't see your toolbox, go to view, and the toolbox should be here. And you want to go to all Windows form and go to down to T. And the timer is here. So we're going to drag the timer into the form. When you drag the timer into the form, it won't appear on the form. It's an object that you can't see. So it will appear down the bottom here. So these are all the objects that are happening in the background. That's kind of how you can think about it. And if you click on the timer, and you go across here and you look at the properties of the timer. There's a bunch of uh, properties here, but the two that, we be, that we'll be working with is false and true here that we can select for the enabled and the interval here, which is default 100. This timer, we don't have any context for it, so um, I'll just keep it as timer one. But if you had context, it could be T, you know, it could be, TRM refresh, you know, it might be a refresh timer or something like that. But this is just a timer that has no context. So this interval here is how often the timer will execute the code you write in it. Right now it's on 100 milliseconds. That basically means it's a, it's a, a second divided by 10. Uh, so it's a tenth of a second. So if you want one second, it would be a thousand milliseconds. So you want to put an extra zero there for one second. And we're going to keep it like that. So of course, uh, if you extrapolate further, two seconds would be 2000. Another important variable, or rather property, is the enabled property. And this is by default false. And really depends how you want to use your timer. If you want your timer to start straight away when your form loads, you want to set it to true. If you don't want to start it straight away, you set it to false. But at some point, you need to go timer.enabled equals true. So you need to turn that timer on. So you can control that via the code. Um, I might just show you how to control it. So I'll set it to false for now. And I'll put a button in that will enable that timer. So this button here, I want this button to enable the timer. So I can go right, enable timer. And in the text property, I'll call, I'll enable timer. So my goal is if I click this, the timer starts. Now, how do I know if the timer starts? I need to program something in the timer. So to program the timer, so I won't double click on the button, I'll double click on the timer because I'll, I want to program the timer first, then I'll program the button. So I'll double click on the timer, I'm going to double click on the timer. And remember, the interval for this timer is one, uh, one second or a thousand milliseconds. So every second is going to do whatever I write in here. Let's make it do this. Let's make it um, move the button around. What do I call my button? I'm gonna go BTN. Did I call my button anything? Ah, oh, TRM, whoops, BTN. Call my BTN. I'm gonna call my button BTN. My button's called BTN enable timer. Enable timer. So this button, what I'll do is I'll make it jump around. So what I'll do is I'll go 
location equals new point and I need a random number generator so I'll just go dim rand as random equals new random open close bracket and then in this point I'll go rand.next I'll make it jump around it uh, around there and rand.next to, to 200 okay so so this will make the button jump around the, for, the form between 0 and 100 between 0 and 100 Oops. Uh, or 200 and that's it so right now if I start this nothing will happen because the timer is by default on false I haven't changed it to true so what, nothing will happen I, and if I click this button nothing will happen because I haven't programmed this button but let me set the timer back to, to true and it should start jumping straight away I've set it to true I'll run the program and this thing should be jumping around and there you go it's already jumping around All right okay so so now I don't want it to jump around yet I want it to be false but I want to enable the timer when I click enable timer so I'm just going to double click on timer here uh, the, the enable timer button so this button now all this button will do is just go timer one dot enabled equals true so all it does is it enables this timer and when this timer is enabled it will start executing this code whatever the interval you set so what every second it will jump around and that's it this should work so I'll start and if I click that it will start jumping around now I can't turn it off because I haven't told it to turn off but we can make it a to we can turn this into a toggle so I can close that down and go if timer equals true then we go timer dot enabled false else oh, so not timer timer one because timer is the type timer one is the actual timer object time enabled equals true and I'm not going to do an if because the only other possible other than true is a false so this will be a false anyway and if it's false it's a true you'll turn it back to true all right let's start that all right so it's jumping around and if i click the timer again it'll stop and if you want it to reset its position you can just go um when 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 you stop it moving you could uh, go button enabled timer enable timer dot um, location we we'll just chuck it back at the original location that it was in actually I don't know what the original location was so what I'll do is when the form loads I might just save the original location wherever that button was so what I'll do is I go button enabled enable timer dot um, dot location and I'll just save into a point. I'll go dim, make a variable called original location as point, it was new point. And then I'll just save this into original location. Original location, uh, what's the issue here? I can't spell okay and now when uh, when the thing loads in I'll just chuck in the original location there we go and now let's run that okay so bob 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 jump 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 and if I click on that it should go back to the original location wherever it was so if I move that button to change its original location here Click here, pop, 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 stop, it jumps back to the original location. 
And uh, that's pretty much how you use a timer. You drag the timer in as an object. You decide whether you want it to start it when the form loads or not. And you decide how fast you want this thing to run or how, you know, how, what's your interval. All right, anyway, thanks for watching.